two historically significant events occurred on October the 26th, 2020. First, the cabinet asked the king to invoke his emergency powers so that it could defeat and overcome its loss of parliamentary support. Second, the king said, no, my name is G.K. Ganesan and this is G.K. TV. Today's topic is, can the king act against the prime minister's advice and refuse to proclaim an emergency? Now, some juries argue that the king cannot decline the prime minister's advice under any circumstance, that the king must obey the cabinet and that he has no discretion. We shall call this the absolute view. There are several issues that we need to address in order to answer the question. So let's take it step by step. A mechanical application of the law without an understanding of the historical development behind it deprives us of the intent and spirit behind it. So we need to take a look at first the historical role and duties of a constitutional monarchy. Second, the role and power of the prime minister and the cabinet. And third, the monarch's role in special cases mentioned in the constitution. Now, in a constitutional monarchy, as a general principle, the monarch hands over the power to rule to the people. Malaysia is a good example. A true democracy is characterized by free elections, not rigged ones. And the people govern themselves through their elected representatives. And that is called in Malaysia the Devon Rayat. In the UK, it's the House of Representatives or the House of Commons. And the other two organs of government are an impartial judiciary and an executive, often called the government, which is a servant of parliament. The monarch, therefore, cannot rule or impose taxes or wage war. In a democracy, the monarch, as a ceremonial head, doesn't interfere with the government. He must and does act in accordance with the advice of the cabinet. The cabinet represents the people. The prime minister, as the leader of the cabinet, administers the nation for the people. The general principle is, if in the proper exercise of his duties, note the word proper, the prime minister advises the king to act in a certain way, then it is a constitutional duty of his majesty, the king, to comply with it. But there is no absolutism about it. The absolutist point to Article 40, Clause 1, they argue that it requires the king and they recite, shall act in accordance with the prime minister's advice. Not satisfied with this restriction in 1994, I believe it was in June, Mahade added an extra clause to Article 40. It is a go-to-jail card. He tried to tighten the absolute obligation in Article 41 and he introduced Clause 1, capital A. It says, here is how it sounds. Where the king is to act in accordance with advice, on advice or after considering advice, the king shall accept and act in accordance with such advice. This phrase adds, in my view, no value to the original imperative clause in Article 40, which says that the king shall act in accordance with the prime minister's advice. But you know, kiasu. Back up a bit and take it slow. Now, true it is that Article 40, Clause 1 removes the monarch's absolute power. The word shall leaves no doubt. It appears to be compulsory. But did you realize that Article 40, Clause 1 has a clause that actually removes the powers of both the king and cabinet? It removes absolute power. It dilutes the position that the king must obey the cabinet absolutely. There is an internal contradiction or conflict in the very words that the absolutists depend on. And here it is. Article 40, Clause 1 states that the king shall act in accordance with the advice of the cabinet except as otherwise provided by this constitution. A second clause in Article 40 enlarges this exception. It says that the king may act in his discretion in any other case mentioned in this constitution. So all we need to look for is a set of clauses in the constitution which are not dependent on any advice of the cabinet. So the constitution gives the king some special powers. Any absolutism in article 40 clause 1 has been in those special cases notably dissolved. In those special parts of the constitution, although the word discretion is not used an equally powerful substitute is, it is the phrase that the king may do or may not do something. That means the king has a discretion. A discretion, as you know, is a right to exercise choice. 
Let's look at this sentence. Ahmad may decide to leave to Kota Baru tonight does not mean Ahmad must absolutely decide whether he is leaving to Kota Baru tonight or not. He may decide not to. You get the point. The proclamation of a constitutional emergency is such a special power. In determining whether he should proclaim an emergency, the king exercises a peculiar constitutional power. It's not existent anywhere else. Article 150 allows the king to proclaim an emergency if five conditions exist. I have written about it earlier, but for completeness, I repeat them here. Let's rehearse it. First, there must exist or potentially exist any one of the three identical situations that amount to an emergency. There must be a threat to one of the identified situations. Example, one threat to national security or two threat to the life of the national economy or three threat to the national public order. Second, the situation must be grave. Grave means very serious. Third, it must be imminent. Imminent means it's going to happen quickly. The wolves are literally at the door. Fourth, the king may proclaim an emergency if, and this is the fifth condition, the king is satisfied that a grave emergency exists. Who must be satisfied? The king must be satisfied, not the prime minister. So see that the absolutism in Article 40 is diluted in these special cases. Now, of course, under Article 40, the king must do what the cabinet advises. That absolutism is diluted in special cases where the king has been granted a greater discretion. So in Article 150, the king is granted special powers to determine to his own satisfaction that a grave emergency exists. Now, this is what is called a constitutional discretion. And if the king is to determine to his own satisfaction, then what's he doing? He is making a judgment call. It's almost an adjudicatory function, you know, the way the judges make decisions. They balance up two sets of facts and they decide they'll decide in favor of this or that. So the king acting as an institution decides. So it's an institutional decision. There is nothing in Article 150 that forces the king to believe whatever the cabinet wants to believe. Article 150 doesn't compel the king to satisfy himself that a great emergency exists just because the cabinet advises him so. Here is an example. Suppose it's a bone dry day. The cabinet turns up at the palace in force. They tell the king, Your Majesty, please declare it's raining cats and dogs because we want to bring out the rescue boats. Now that doesn't mean it's in fact raining or that the king needn't exercise his powers of observation and decision making. And it doesn't mean that the king must agree with what the cabinet thinks. Finally, it doesn't mean the king is forced to declare it's now raining. So under Article 150, the king has a constitutional duty and power to decide for himself that there is in fact a torrent. Torrent means heavy rain. La. So there is a second clause in Article 150 that embellishes the king's personal exercise of constitutional power. It's in these words. If he satisfied all those conditions exist, the king may issue a proclamation. The word may any judge will tell you is an expression of discretion. So what's the discretion? It is as we spoke earlier, the right to choose. The king can and should decline the cabinet's request if they themselves had acted in conflict of the law or had acted in breach of their duties. When they made the demand to the king, the cabinet and the PM had either lost or were about to lose command of the Devan Raya. The cabinet attempted to seize control and remain in power without the Devan Raya's consent. This is unconstitutional. To ask the king to proclaim an emergency when those identified circumstances did not exist place the cabinet and the prime minister in a conflict of duties. They didn't advise his majesty the king correctly. The cabinet as leaders of the executive are accountable to parliament. The Devon riot either doesn't support them or will soon not do so. As servants of parliament and not having its steady support, the government lost its constitutional legitimacy to demand anything of his majesty the king. So the king was quite entitled in my respectful view and he was legally right to reject the advice of the prime minister and the cabinet. Dear friends, thank you for watching. This is GK Gunnison and you are listening to an episode of GK TV. Please share this video widely. Please subscribe, like, 
and until i see you again in another exciting episode of law goodbye